Good morning, church. As usual, let us get in the mode of worship. Amen? I know we're all happy to be here. We're hap all happy to see a new year. And, you know, we got to lift him up and praise him for bringing us here. Amen? Lift Jesus higher, a little higher. From this earth to eternity, he said, if I be lifted up from this earth, I will draw all men unto me. Lift him up. Lift Jesus higher, 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 a little higher, higher, higher. From this earth to eternity. Eternity. He said, if I be lifted up from this earth, I will draw all men on to me. Come on, Come on let's sing. Lift Jesus higher, 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 a little higher, higher, higher. From this earth to eternity, eternity. He said, if I be lifted up from this earth, I will draw all men on to me. Come on, lift him. Lift Jesus. Higher, 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 a little higher, 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 from this earth to eternity. He said, If I be lifted up from this earth, I will draw all men on to me. Come on, lift him higher, lift Jesus higher, oh, higher, higher, a little. Higher, oh, higher, higher, from this earth to eternity. He said, If I be lifted up from this earth, I will draw all men on to me. Praise the Lord, praise Him, praise the Lord, praise Him. I thank Him. For joy and peace divine, oh yeah. When I was sad and lonely and didn't know what to do, I thank Him for saving my soul. Let's praise Him. Praise the Lord, praise Him. Praise the Lord, praise Him. I thank Him for joy and peace divine, oh yeah. When I was sad and lonely and didn't know what to do, I thank Him for saving my soul. One more time. Oh, praise the Lord, praise Him. Praise the Lord, praise Him. I thank Him for joy and peace divine. When I was sad and lonely and didn't know what to do, I thank him for saving my soul. Amen. Good morning, Westchester. Come, let us worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness, for he is here. Hallelujah. He is here. Amen. Please stand and join me for the call to worship, if you're able. Lord, you have been a dwelling place in all generations, who reigns forever. Our opening hymn, Come, We That Love the Lord.
and mind for the prayer <coughs> in the bulletin. No? Yeah. Almighty God, you search our hearts and you see every part of us. All our desires are known to you and from you no, re no secrets are hidden. By the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, cleanse our hearts so that we may perfectly love you and glorify your holy name. We pray this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The proclamation. Dearly loved brothers and sisters, the Christian life is a life found in Christ, redeemed from sin and consecrated to God. We are those who have entered into this life and have been admitted into the new covenant of Jesus Christ. He is the mediator of this covenant. He sealed it with his own blood, so it would last forever. On one side of this covenant stands God, who promises to give us new life in Jesus Christ, the author and the perfecter of our faith. Every day, God proves his goodness and grace to us, showing us that his promise still stands firm. On the other side, we stand as those who promise to no longer live life for ourselves, but instead to lo only live for Jesus Christ because he has loved us and given his life for us. There are times in our lives when it is important for us to remember and reaffirm <laughs> our promises and vows. In this same way, we come today to renew our covenant with God. Many generations have done this before us. Today, we make the covenant our own, renewing with both joy and sincerity the covenant that binds us all to God. Amen. Good morning, the confession. We are those who seek to live as true disciples of Jesus Christ, but sometimes we fall short. Let us now examine ourselves before God, humbly conf confessing our sins and submitting our hearts so that we do not deceive ourselves and cut ourselves away from God. Let us pray. Father God, you have set forth the way of life through your son, Jesus Christ, whom you love dearly. We shamefully confess that we have been slow to learn of him and have been reluctant to follow him. You have spoken and called to us, but we have not listened. You have revealed your beauty to us, but we have been blind. You have stretched out your hands to us through our friends, but we have passed by. We have accepted your gifts and offered little thanks. We are unworthy of your unchanging love. We now confess to you our sins. Please forgive us for the poverty of our worship, for the selfishness of our prayers, for our inconsistency and unbelief, for the ways we neglect fellowship in your grace, for our hesitation to tell others about Christ, for the ways we deceive others. Forgive us for when we, when we waste time, and when we misuse the gifts you have given us. Forgive us for when we have made excuses for the wrong things we have done and when we have purposefully avoided responsibility. Forgive us that we have been unwilling to overcome evil with good and that we have not been ready to carry our cross. Forgive us that we have not allowed your love to work through us to help others and that we have not made their suffering our own. Forgive us for those times when, instead of working for unity, we made it hard for others to live 
with us because of our lack of forgiveness, inconsiderate judgment, and quick criticism. Forgive us for when we have not tried to reconcile with others and when we have been slow to seek redemption. Forgive us also for these sins that we silently confess to you now. Words of assurance, pardon? Words of assurance and pardon. God the Father, all of mercies, is faithful to cleanse us from our sins and restore us to Christ's image. Praise and glory be to God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. amen. The Lord's Prayer. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Wow, everyone looks so nice up here. Good morning to those who are worshiping at home, and good morning to my church family. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. How are you doing today? Good? Thumbs up? Yes. So for those who were here last Sunday, do you remember what I spoke about? Seems long, right? Oh, you weren't here? I don't think you were here. No? I missed you. But yeah, anyone could think about what we spoke about. Something big is going on, right? A new what? 
A new year. A new year started. What year is this year? Can someone tell me what year? January. The year. Oh, 2024. 2024, 2024, yes. And what month are we in? June. Okay, thank you. January. January, you're right, it starts with a J. <laughs> January, yes. So we're in a new year, new beginnings, right? I, I initially wanted to talk about something, but I want to talk about something else because it's been on my mind so much. What that entails, what do, who do you put first? I'm always gonna say this. Who do you put first when the year starts and you want to accomplish or do things? Who do you put first? God. Said it nice and loud, God. God. God, listen, when, you, when we walk up here, we're gonna walk up here like God sent us, and when we talk, we're gonna talk like God gave us these words to say, say right? So we're gonna talk loud. See, I'm kinda under the weather, but my mouth is still big, loud. But, okay, so I wanna tell you a story about this, kid, he was around maybe eight, nine years of age, and he told his mom that he wants to create a playroom, and he wants his friends to help him create this playroom, right? So who knows what a playroom is? What is a playroom? Isn't it like, like a room full of toys or entertainment? Toys and entertainment. And he wanted to do this in the garage, because they, they had two garages, and one wasn't really occupied, right? So said, oh, how can I get all my friends to come over and do the hard work, put things together and so forth? So day one, he had a lot of food and candies and things for you to play with, and they came and they were happy. It was around maybe 10 of them, right? Everyone was happy. Day two, same thing, food, uh, music, candy, everything. Day three, same thing. Day four, same thing. But guess what? They got low on candies, they got low on pizza and uh, entertainment. Guess what happened? They realized that, wait a minute, we don't have that much? Some of them was like, I'm not coming back here because there's no candy, there's no juice, there's no music, there's no fun. It's just work, work, work. That's what they were supposed to, say that again. Isn't that what they were supposed to be doing? Today? Yes, but you know what? Some people have different intentions. They wanted to just have fun and get all the juice and candies and food and entertainment but no work. Day 10 came, all they had was water and a little sandwich. How many, how many children you think survived this journey? Uh, two, no, one, no, zero. Him by himself. And did he stop what he was doing? No, he continued, right? And his cousin came over and his mom sometimes helped. But guess what? He was, he was finished with it, he completed. And what do you think have, happened when he was finished and they had the playroom? He was exhausted. Yeah, he was exhausted, but yes, what? All of the kids came back. All the kids came back, and you know what he did? He welcomed them, he did. But the moral of the story is that you're gonna have plans, and you're gonna have things that you wanna do, and people may start with you, but that doesn't mean that they're gonna That doesn't mean they're going to end with you, no. Not because they're not there for you all the time mean that you should stop what your goals are. For the new year, whatever goal it is, I ask some of you to think of a goal that you have for the new year. Something that you want to do and accomplish for the year. Did you come up with one? Um, make it to high school and probably try to be a chef by, um, I don't know, 10th grade. 10th grade? He wants to be a chef. Listen, I could be your tester every now and then, but you gotta guarantee that it comes out good. <laughs> all right, let me see. all right, so, but the whole thing is what I'm trying to tell you is that, anyone has, an, anyone else? New year resolution, new year goal, plan? No? You sure? You're just gonna take it as a goal, right? As it comes, right? Well, for 2024, as you go, you may think of things. My thing is to always try to be more understanding. My goal is to be more understanding, be more helpful, and be more involved in my community and my church. Right? So that's my goal for 2024. And I'm going to pray, and I'm going to fast, and I'm going to ask God to continue to strengthen me so I can do this. So really think about some things that you write it down, jot it down. Keep it in front of you, what you want to do, okay? And do it. 
And no matter what, if there's no one else there to push you along, just know that God is with you and call on him. Amen? Amen. 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 Can we stand to pray, please? Anyone wants to lead a prayer, you know? Uh -uh. Why do you say uh uh so fast? You, you, you initiate your brother, but you're not saying me, 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 right? <laughs> it's okay. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this blessed morning. We thank you for 2024. We thank you for all that you are about to do for us, dear God. As we continue to praise you, magnify and glorify you, as your children look to you for guidance, dear God, we ask that you continue to lead them in such a positive light, dear God. They are here. They are your vessels, dear God. They are here to do your work, dear God, the work that you set us out to do. We ask that you continue to bless them, bless them from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet. In your mighty name, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. 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 I pray for you. You pray for me. I love you. I need you to survive. I will tell you with words from my mouth. I love you. I need you to survive. It is his will that
generosity as you march joyfully forward with your tithes and offering to pass, participate in this generous undertaking let us remember that God loves a cheerful giver God is good God is good <laughs> good to us. So as we remember, let's concentrate on the words of this prayer for the new year. Lord God, make me a true steward of your bounty. Where there is a need, let me see it. Where there is abundance, let me share it. Where there is time, let me spend it. And where there is treasure, let me use it for your glory. Amen. Let us please be seated. Good morning, church. Good morning. The first scripture lesson is taken from 2 Kings 23, 1 to 3. That's 2 Kings 23, 1 to 3. Then the king directed all that the elders of Judah and the Jerusalem should be gathered to him. The king went up to the house of the Lord, and with him went all the people of Judah, all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, the priests, the prophets, and all the people, both small and great. He read in their hearing all the words of the book of the covenant that had been found in the house of the Lord. 
The king stood by the pillar and made a covenant before the Lord to follow the Lord keeping his commandments, his decrees and his statutes, and all his heart and all his soul to perform the words of his covenant that were written in the book. All the people joined in the covenant. Thanks be to God for the reading of his holy word. The gospel comes to us from Mark chapter 1, reading verses 4 to 11. Please stand if you are able. Mark 1, 4 through 11. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the, in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son. Son, the beloved, with you I am well pleased. The word of God. Let us please be seated. Chancellor Choir no? will minister to us. <laughs>
things. Mm -hmm. One of the things that it does mean is that we are entering into a binding relationship with God. And we usually, as Methodists, we start the new year, or sometimes it's done on watch night. But we start the new year with renewing our covenant with God. And so we bear in mind that it is not us who initiate this process, but rather it's God who initiated the process. God invites us into covenant with him. And so when God invites us into covenant with, us, with him, then we have an option to say yes to him or no. And so when we decide to go into this period of covenanting, we are deciding a yes to God. So I want us to bear that in mind as we approach this message for today. You are. I also want to remind us that today, as the passage which will form the basis of our text would speak of, is the baptism of Jesus and what happened at that baptism. So we are also in the season of Epiphany. Yesterday, the 6th would have been Epiphany. So today, Sunday the 7th, we celebrate Epiphany as well. That time of the revealing, the time of the um, discovery. And also, with Epiphany, we also remember the wise men. The wise men who went to see Jesus. They didn't show up on Christmas Day, you know. Straight up after, after that. And they came with gifts to give to Jesus. Now the thing about it is that because there were three different kinds of gifts, 
we assume that there were three wise men. But there could very well be more. Or guess what else? Less. But we remember the three kinds of gifts that were given. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Gold we know a king receives. Frankincense we know a priest dispenses. And myrrh, also connected with that, but the undertaker. <laughs> Embalmers, those who are um, getting you ready for the life beyond this one, after you would have passed on. So, within that context, we gather today to make covenant. And so the text for our message today is Mark chapter 1, verses 4 to 11. Mark chapter 1, 4 to 11. And I want to lift up a few, a couple of these verses, three of them actually, in your hearing as you prepare to receive this word. Mark chapter 1, verses 4 to 11, starting at verse 9. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And the voice came from heaven, You are my son, the, the, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. You are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. Title of the message is, You Are. You Are. Let us pray to God. <coughs> Lord God, on this Covenant Sunday, and this first Sunday of this new year, 2024, we come opening up ourselves to your influence seeking a fresh anointing from you as we not only start the new year, but start out with a new name. Start out on a new path. And so, God, we ask that your spirit descend upon us just as you descended that same spirit upon Jesus. We ask that you tear the heavens open and speak life into us. Speak to us, O oh God, and let us know that we are yours. And because we are yours, we are loved. And because we are loved and we are yours, you are pleased with us. And so, God, we pray that you let the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts, be, that it be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. When you look at our text, you will see there that John the Baptist, cousin of Jesus, was not only preaching about the kingdom, not only baptizing persons, but John was, in a sense, ushering in a new community, a community that was markedly different than any they had seen before. Yes, John was Jewish. John had come out of ancient Israel and was called to be the forerunner of Jesus. But one of the things he didn't do was to baptize Jews. You see, when a person was converting from 
anything else into Judaism, they would be baptized as part of the ritual. They would offer sacrifices. And then they would also be circumcised. The Jew was already circumcised and the Jew would have already offered a sacrifice. As you will remember happened with Jesus when he was taken to the temple and Simeon saw in him the salvation of God, the consolation of Israel. But he never baptized Jews. So it was a strange thing that John was doing. He was saying to those who were there that they should come and get baptized. And sure enough, pricked at heart, they came. And also Jesus came. Jesus came, and if you read the account in John's Gospel, you will see there that, G that John was protesting. He didn't really want to baptize Jesus. He knew who Jesus was. In fact, the way he described his present relationship with Jesus, he said, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandal. In other words then, I am like the dust. And he's the one who stirred up the dust. I am not as important as he is. He's coming after I would have done what I set out to do. And so Jesus presented himself and eventually John yielded and Jesus was baptized. But notice here that not just what John said about Jesus, but rather what the Spirit of God said about Jesus. First, the Spirit cracked heaven open. And not only that, Spirit came down. So you can imagine all of those people gathered around, witnessing heaven cracked open. Witnessing the Spirit of God descending upon Jesus. Remember, John had said that the one who comes after me is greater than I am. So now they are seeing God's Spirit descend upon Jesus and setting him apart as separate and apart, as distinctively different than John. And what did he say? You are my son. The beloved, with you I am well pleased. Now, we might say that the gospel writer was quoting what the Spirit was saying about Jesus. And that's true. But you know what is also true? He was speaking about us who are children of God. If in truth we have given ourselves to Jesus, if in truth we have surrendered our lives to Jesus, if in truth Jesus is the Lord of our lives, so if that is true, that we have given ourselves to Jesus and Jesus now lives within us, then those words are also spoken of us in our time. So, baptism is seen as the sacrament of initiation into this new community of God's people. So, in a sense, what was happening back then is that through the baptism, and if you recall as well and read the, the passage in John, John's Gospel, you will see there that John's response uh, Jesus' response to John was, let it be so that we can fulfill all things. The Jesus community was being started through what John was doing. It continues into our time. 
And so when we experience baptism, we are initiated into this Christian community and surrender ourselves as God's people. We surrender ourselves to Jesus and by extension, we surrender ourselves to be a part of this community of God's people. And what it means then is that God lays claim to us that we belong to God. We no longer belong to ourselves, that God owns us. That in truth, God is not just the head of our lives, but he is sovereign of our lives. He, and this is not ruling over in the sense of exercising power that dominates or destroys, but rather operating with authority, directing and guiding and helping and facilitating the life of God becoming full in us. So God claims us and God declares we are his children. And if we belong to God, then all that is God is us. Because now God places everything at our disposal. Remember Jesus? I will never leave you nor forsake you. I will be with you to the end of the age. Remember Jesus? The thief comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy, but I'm come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Remember Jesus? I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. You see, what you understand here is that when God claims us, God declares that we belong to him. And so just like Jesus on the day of his baptism, God is saying to us that you are my child. He's saying you are beloved. He's saying that I'm pleased in you. Put another way. From this day forward, you belong to me. And that's all that matters. But if you belong to God, if you are God's possession, then what does it mean? When God, the Holy Spirit, declared from heaven that you are, what did he mean? And this is how I want you to remember the, the core of this message. Because the first thing that it meant is that I am affirming you. When he said that you are my son, you are my child, God was affirming Jesus' sonship. Jesus belonged to God. And by extension now, you belong to God. Put another way, you carry my DNA. In other words then, I have placed within you my blueprint. I have placed within you my spirit. I have labeled you as my own. You bear in yourself my authority. So when you go through life, you go through life being able to declare to the mountains that you will encounter, remove knowing that you have the authority vested in you because Jesus is in you. So no illness, nothing that is untoward has a last say upon your life. Put another way, what, what, what it means to be affirmed is to be told that you're okay. And what that means is that no matter what, what others might say about you, what matters is what God says about you. No matter what your past might say about you, what matters is what God has, has said about you. And when God lays claim to you, no past can destroy you. When God has laid claim to you and declares that you are his, Nothing that persons say about you matter because God is the renewer. God is the one who empowers. God is the one who enables. 
God is the one who plants his DNA on you. But it's not just simply you are affirmed. That was being said when God said, you are my son. What was also being declared is that you are renewed. You are made new. <laughs> In other words, then all that you have been has been stripped away because now the only thing that matters is what I'm doing with you. You see, to be renewed is not just to put on new clothes, you know. To be renewed is to be changed in character. That your very core has been replaced. And when you say yes to Jesus, it's your core sense of being that gets renewed. Because not only is God saying my DNA is on you, but now you are also my beloved. And you know love renews. Love renews. Wherever love thrives, newness happens. And so here in our text, the voice from heaven declares, you are my beloved, you are loved. And that's what God is declaring to you. That yes, people might try to stir up the stuff of the past, but the stuff of the past does not define you anymore. It's rather your relationship with God that defines you. And as you start out this new year, I implore you to leave behind in 2023 all the old stuff. Because God is standing ready to do a new thing with you. God is getting ready to, to, to put you in some places where you have just dreamt about, but now God is moving the pieces to make them happen. In the truth, what is happening to us is that God is converting us into what God always wanted us to be. You know, that's what agape is about, you know. Not only is God saying, I love you, in the sense that I desire nothing but the best for you, but you and I now must live that. We too must be agape others. We must love others. And it is in our love for others that others will come to know the Jesus who is in you. Amen. If you are able to love them. And you, you know we human beings like to talk about, oh, I don't know, I, like, I, I don't like them. <laughs> God doesn't ask you to like everybody. But he asks us to love even our enemies. Because God understands that love can change people. You see, if you desire nothing but the best for the other person, and you really mean the best for the other person, you will never do anything or say anything that is destructive to the life of that person because you have already turned them over to God. That's what love is. That's what agape is. And you know I like to quote musical youths, right? And done a summer on this one. Give me your unconditional love, it says. The kind of love I deserve, the kind of love I'll give in return. It's unconditional, it's non-reacting, it's everlasting. It's agape, it renews us. So yes, God affirms us. You are affirmed, God says. You are renewed, God says, because my love is with you and then God says not only affirm but you are empowered notice what he says here about Jesus the newly baptized Jesus the newly identified Jesus he says I am very pleased with you. So what is God saying to us in our time? God is saying that you are not just affirmed, not just renewed, but now you are empowered. 
You have on your inside the power to do what God requires of you. And that's covenant, you know. When you enter into covenant with God, God gives you the power to live out the demands of the covenant. So yes, we know that it's hard to make changes, but the changes that are being made are not made in your strength. But they are made in the power of God, and you in turn are empowered by the power of God. You see, this kind of power that is spoken of is a power that is dunamis, you know that? Dynamite, mm, explosive. God places within you an explosive presence that people just like you because of him. Not because of anything about you. Like me, you could be the ugliest person on earth. But power inside makes you winsome. People will be drawn to you. But you know the other piece to this? No matter how weak you were, with God, you are powerful. Yes. My mother used to say that if God, if Jesus is the, you know, we are all on this life sea. But if Jesus is with you in your boat, you can smile at any storm. And you can smile at the storm because Jesus has the power to quell, to quiet any storm. That's what happens with us when we open ourselves up to what God is doing and what God is declaring in us. So it's not by your strength or by your power, but by the Spirit of God. God is able to make something beautiful out of you if in truth you yield yourself to him. And if you yield yourselves to him, watch him go to work for you. You see, God is not a God who just simply speak words. But the words that God speaks take on life. And the life that they take on transforms you and transforms me. So yes, you are God's child. Yes, you are also renewed and redeemed. But you are also empowered. And what does that mean? It means that God has set you up for destiny. It means God has set you up for destiny. God is determined to make your destiny real. You know, he said it in Jeremiah. I know the plans I have for you. Understand, not plans to undo you, but plans for goods. Plans to give you a future and the hope. But when Jesus says that if you ask anything in my name, I'll do it. Jesus was declaring destiny. God is determined to move us into our destiny. God is in the process of calling us into that place where God knows we need to be. And the funny thing about it, you know, is that we don't even have to be conscious about it. We have to just be open to it. You see, what God has prepared for you can't be un for you. You know what the Jamaicans say? What is for you can be un for you. That destiny that God has declared for you is for you and only you. So here is the question for you. Are you willing and ready to step into the destiny that God has declared and prepared for you? Are you ready? and determined to step into the destiny, step into an open future with God, knowing that the God who calls is the same God who accompanies. 
He never sends us any place that he will not accompany us. So wherever you are, there God is. You can cry out to God. In fact, that's what Jeremiah also says in Jeremiah 29, 11 through 14. Not only the promise that I have a plan for you. He says you can call and I'll answer. No matter how dark this situation is, no matter how dire, in the midst of that you can cry out to God and know that God will hear you. However, if you regard iniquity in your heart, he will not hear you. And that's not my word, no, that's Psalms. Hmm? If you regard iniquity in your heart, the Lord will not hear you. If you be, if you be with somebody, if you don't like them, and you know, one of be good brother gums. That's iniquity. And iniquity gets between you and God. So that what God is seeking to do for you is blocked. So desire nothing but the good for everybody and watch God blow through every stumbling block in your way. And make life what it ought to be. You know I have said to persons over and over again that faith has more to do, has less to do with receiving what we expect than it has to do with accepting what we receive. Faith has more to do with our being able to accept what we receive than to receive what we expect. So when we don't get what we expect, we get all bent out of shape. But we don't know the workings back here. You don't know what God is protecting you from. You don't know where God is moving you towards. You don't know how God is positioning you. In other words, that you don't know how much God is making you into what you were intended to be. But here, over here, you're crying that this didn't happen, that didn't happen. So God doesn't love me. Faith in God has more to do with our being able to accept what God gives and allows than to receive what we expect. So this 2024, there are going to be some ups and downs, and he never promised you a rose garden. But you're going to have some ups and downs. But if you keep hanging with God, if you stay with God, God will bring you through victoriously because God never leaves his children in a place of defeat. If you trust God, if you hang with God, God will bring you through victoriously. So God is determined to give you a destiny that is full of hope. But are you willing to step into that destiny? Are you determined to step into that destiny with God? My prayer is that that's exactly what you'll do. Step into your future with a God who loves, a God who affirms, and a God who empowers. May God be with you today and every moment of your life. I know Brother Savage isn't there, but I want us to sing Because He Lives, I Can Face Tomorrow. And as Minister Savage plays this, and you feel disposed to come to the altar to give your life to Him, I invite you to come. Come and give yourself to him. Come and place yourself and your concerns and cares at the altar, trusting that God will meet you there because he promises to meet you there.
one, baby. And feel the pride and the joy he gives. joy he gives. But greater still, the calm assurance this child can face on certain days because he lives. I can face tomorrow. ourselves back to you. We yield our, our control of ourselves back to you and ask your God to speak through us and to us your word so that you can guide our lives into the places where you are God and only you can. Speak life into our beings again and the gaps that we seek to fill we ask your God to fill those gaps on our behalf where our bodies are experiencing great
break brokenness. We ask you to mend and heal. Where our minds and our spirits and our souls are experiencing fragmentation, Lord, we ask you to hold us together so we never fall apart. Have your way with us and take us with you on this journey into 2024. This is our prayer and we ask you, believing that you hear us, because we ask in Jesus' name and for your sake. Amen. Now you may go in the power of God's will to do his will. Amen. a portion in the bulletin that says reception of new members. We can do that now. So those who are so inclined and are ready, I invite you to come at this time. Bring your bulletin with you. What a way to start the new year, right? Yeah. And I want to take this as a sign of what God is going to do. Yeah. Notice that there are two men. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Alrighty. Now, to all who are being received into membership and to all who have been baptized in this congregation, Remember your baptism and be thankful. Amen. Amen. We have these two brothers, Leroy and Delbert. You will hear of their last names later. So Leroy and Delbert, the Holy Spirit work within you that being born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. I ask you both, as members of this congregation, will you faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? Members of the household of God, I commend these two men to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase their faith, confirm their hope, and perfect them in love. All that God has already given you, and we welcome you in Christian love as members together with you in the body of Christ and in the convocation of the Westchester Methodist Church, we renew our covenant faithfully to participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. The God of all grace, who has called us to eternal glory in Christ, Establish you, Delbert and Leroy, 
and strengthen you in the power of the Holy Spirit that you may live in grace and peace. Amen. Welcome to Westchester. Thank you. We'll get your certificate invitation. Let us gather here before the Lord now in covenant. Commit ourselves to Christ as his servants. Let us give ourselves to him so that we may fully belong to him. Jesus Christ has left us with many services to be done. Some of these services are easy and honorable, but some are difficult and disgraceful. Some line up with our desires and interests. Others are contrary to both. In some, we please both Christ and ourselves, but then there are other works where we cannot please Christ except by denying ourselves. Jesus Christ, we offer you this prayer. Let, Let me be, be your servant. servant. Let, Let me follow, follow your, your commands. commands. I will, I will no, no longer follow, follow my, my own desires. desires. I give, I give myself, myself completely, completely to, you. to your will. The power and strength to live as true servants is given to us in Christ. We accept the place and work that he gives us, acknowledging that he alone will be our reward. We pray together. I am not my own. I'm yours alone. Make me into what you will. Rank me with those you will. Put me to use for you. Put me to suffering for you. Let me be employed for you. Let me be laid aside for you. Let me be lifted high for you. Let me be brought low for you. Let me be full or let me be empty. Let me have all things or let me have nothing. With a willing heart, I freely give everything to your pleasure and disposal. O oh Lord, God, Holy Father, who has called us through Christ to be partakers in this gracious covenant, we take upon ourselves with joy the yoke of obedience and engage ourselves for love of thee to seek and do thy perfect will. We are no longer our own but thine. Lift up your hearts. Lift up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord, most high. Amen. Here is your response, my brothers and sisters. You are advised to make this covenant not only in your heart, but in word. Not only in word, but in writing. Therefore, with all reverence, lay the service before the Lord as your act and deed. Choose at least one ministry in which you will become actively involved during this year. Resolve to support the ministries of this church fully and faithfully with your tithes and offerings. And when you have done this, sign it. 
then keep it as a reminder of your holy agreement between God and you, that you may remember it during times of doubt and temptation. Before you now is this opportunity to sign and date this covenant today. And if you have forgotten what date it is, it's the seventh day of the year, January 2024. I don't know if the ushers have given you the pledge cards. The reason that we usually give this out on Covenant Sunday is so that you can resolve what your giving is going to be for the year in the light of the covenant you make. We encourage persons to give a tithe, which is a tenth of their earnings toward the ongoing work of ministry through the church. So we usually talk about tithes and offerings. The tithe is the tenth. Offering is anything in addition. And so we ask if you have the commitment cards to complete them at this time. And when you're leaving, there will be a basket in which you can drop them. Please stand for the reading of the, for the communion. Christ, O oh Lord, invites to his table all who love him, who honestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. I love, I love you with you your with whole heart. heart. We, we have, have failed to be an obedient church. church. We, we have not done your will. We, we have broken your law. We, we have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners that proves God's love towards us. In the name of Jesus, Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory, Glory to God. God. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Holy and gracious Father, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to share our human condition. Live as one of us and express your love to all by teaching, preaching, healing, leading, guiding, dying, and rising for us. We thank you for coming to be among us, for sharing with us the heart of your transforming love and acceptance and for giving us your amazing presence through the power of your Holy Spirit. We have not been left alone to seek after your will in darkness, but have been blessed with the light of the scriptures, the traditions and history of the church universal, 
our experience of your sanctifying grace and minds compatible of reasoning faith. And so, having heard your word proclaimed and having offered our prayers as your people, now we gather at this your table to be reunited to your son and with each other, sharing the bread of heaven and being fed with your holy, mysterious, real presence. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, Jesus took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to God, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this all of you, this is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. By Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one loaf. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ, and the cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ. Draw near with faith and receive this sacrament to your comfort. <laughs> I'm going to ask that both who were receiving to membership come with the choir.
us pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirits to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And so the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord makes his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Just want to wish you the best for this new year. I trust that your dreams, your aspirations, your longings, your heart's longings will be realized and God's sufficiency will prove to be sufficient. Want to thank each one of you who came out for worship today, those who um, came out in the sanctuary and those who came out in other places. Trust that God has truly blessed you in this process of covenanting and that as you renew that covenant, you will find that God is leveraging God's power and authority on your side. In the bulletin this morning, you will notice that there is an information flyer, the second to last page, not the back page, but on the back page, on the inside. You see we have a fundraiser that is coming up in February of 2025, a whole year plus, no? And it's a cruise on Norwegian Cruise Line and it is the escape vessel. <laughs> the question is escape from where or what? But hopefully by, the 20, by 2025 we'll know escaping from what or running to what. <laughs> but um, it's a... Um, from the 23rd of February to March 7th. Um, yeah, as I mentioned, it's a fundraiser and we need persons to sign up. But we don't just need you who are members here. We need you to take this flyer and encourage your friends to come with you on this cruise. Here is the kicker though. They only have a few cabins reserved to start with. And from what I have been told, these will be held until the 10th of January. After that, the price will change. That's what we hear. It could change. Put it that way. It could change. No, if it go down, we go down with it. So they, usually these prices don't go down, they go up. So what we're encouraging you to do is to do this as soon as possible, like today. And here is the other kicker, the deposit to hold your place. It's $250. And so we are asking you to make good on that as soon as possible. You have the interior per person, is given there, one, three, six, five, and 33 cents. The ocean view per person is one, five, seven, four, and 93 cents. And the balcony per person is one, seven, seven, three, 38. Now these prices are conditioned on a two person per room. Two person per room, but this price here is for each person. So we are asking you to begin to plan this out. Uh, a few weeks ago we mentioned that we are exploring this um, as we try to build out our finances to fund our ministries going forward. Um, as you can see, the persons to speak with right off the cuff are Donald Skelton and Sister Cora Doran. 
we need a third person. We need a third person. Say that? <laughs> no, skeleton is on there. See him right there sitting down? So he and Sister Cora, but they have, they have shared they need a third person because, you know, Brother Skeleton travels often. Okay. So hold on, hold on, hold on. Um, Brother Skeleton travels a whole lot. He stood up briefly. So we're going to ask him to stand up again so you know for sure who is Brother Skelton. Okay. If some of us actually add another letter and call him by another name. But um, be that as it may. So you, you, you can reach out to Brother Skelton or Sister Cora, but we need a third person. Remember, you just made covenant here. I don't want to have to draft you. So, you have until the last hymn <laughs> to determine if you're going to answer this particular call by yourself. You'll do it. Sister Sandra will do it. <laughs> okay, thank you, Sister Sandra. So we'll add Sister Sandra's number and name to this information so you have next week, okay? All righty, thank you. Want to also, um, I know yesterday it was that the knitting and crochet ministry started. Was it yesterday it started back? Yeah, I know I saw a particular car outside and I said, hmm, knitting and crocheting is happening. Crocheting is happening. Okay. And as you see, um, they'll continue Saturday and then the 20th and then February. Continue. Also be in mind the Sunday brunch. That's next week. Following the worship service, another fundraising event. 12.50 per plate is what is um, being um, advertised, so please bear that in mind. Upper room disciplines are still available. See Sister Laureen Dick. Um, want to recognize those persons who are celebrating birthdays. Sister Gladys Thompson in Co-op City. Let's hope she's listening to us now. Um, we celebrate with her. Is there anyone else celebrating this week? It's your birthday this week? When is your birthday? No, no, no. When is your birthday? No, when is your birthday? <laughs> Whose birthday you were celebrating? Your cousin. Tell us your cousin's birthday. What's the cousin's name? That's okay. We can celebrate your cousin with you. What's your cousin's name? Ariel. Ariel. So we celebrate with Ariel as well. Hear me, man. It's never nothing here, you know. Okay? So we celebrate with Ariel, and we celebrate with Ariel with Michael. Okay. We wish that each one of you have a most blessed birthday. Trusting that God will pour blessings into your lives in ways that you can't even begin to imagine. As I said, email um, photos and names to this number, this um, email, and we will have them posted. Already? Also want to share with you a thank you to my pastor, and the Westchester Methodist Church family. Thank you for your kindness during my time of bereavement. It's small kindnesses that touch us most, the little gestures that show someone is thoughtful and kind and so that someone cares. 
And it's even more wonderful when those kind gestures come from the whole group of people. Thanks so much to all of you. Brother Cartwright Chapman, may God continue to bless you all. Um, didn't discuss it with the lay leader, but after church next week, we're going to have a the stuff back here but i'm hoping that sometime next week we can have a congregational meeting so find a way to put that on the calendar so we can announce it on sunday okay um some of you have been praying with us through the disaffiliation process um all documents are in and we are waiting for the green light from the conference to say um, we wish you well as you go forward into the Global Methodist Church. That's where we are at this point. And so I ask you, I crave your indulgence to continue praying. Um, God has been good to us up to this point, and we know God has always been good through to the end. And so we look to God with hope. Is there anything else I'm forgetting? No, I'm looking at the food table, and I know because we recently started it up that enough isn't there. But we are hoping that you remember, we need to put it in the bulletin probably the Sunday before to remind you that we're going to have the food table. The food collected is usually given to a... Uh, um, food pantry where they have um, preparation of hot meals for um, persons who are in need at St. Anthony's Church. So we partner with them on this. Uh, on Tuesday coming, we go visiting the sick and the shut in and do the nursing home visit. If you have interest in joining us, call. Call in tomorrow and let us know. Already? You are willing? Yes, Maria, I'm not sure. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Brother Maya? Yes, yes, some visitors. Yeah, we'll go there. Are you going there? <laughs> yes, I just wanted to thank everyone who contributed poinsettias during the holiday season. Um, it made the, our little space here more festive, and I just want to invite you to, there are some outside, and I just want to invite you to take them home if you have a green thumb. They will last throughout the year if you attend to them. And <laughs> I'll also get someone who has a few more inches than I do to remove the ones that are still lining the walls now. But if you brought one and you see it, you can take it home, and um, I will somehow get these down before you leave. Thank yeah. you. We have a person here who might look like a ladder. If you prop him up, he will take them down. Um, he's probably the tallest person. In the <laughs> anyway, I want to welcome those who are worshiping with us today for the first time or the first time in a long time. Could you just stand so that we can recognize you and celebrate your presence with us, if you don't mind? Okay. And nobody says my cousin. Good morning, church. I am Cynthia Isaac, visiting from Thomas Wesleyan Methodist Church in Harlem. It's good to be here. Happy New Year to everyone. Thanks. She is Cynthia Isaac. Visiting with us from Thomas Wesleyan Methodist Church in Harlem. Amen. Reverend Fairway would ask if she's a Yadi. <laughs> but I would say, yes, she's a Yadi, but from Antigua. <laughs> That's the yard that she came from. But <laughs> you see, I whispered it to these in front here, and I don't want any of you saying that she's my cousin. But we welcome you. Welcome you among us. 
I've been saying to her, she doesn't have to go into Harlem since she lives in the Bronx. So the hope is that she'll make us her primary home. Is there anyone else? Okay, I want to thank everyone who had anything to do with the worship service. Want to thank the Chancel Choir. Want to thank um, Brother Gums, Brother Roland, Minister Savage for their ministry music. Want to also thank Sister Maria Kana for reading our first lesson. Want to thank the lay ministers, sisters. Ja Jocelyn and the Deaconess want to also thank our social media folk, but I also want to thank Reverend Dawson for her involvement. Um, all those who had to do with live streaming, thank you. Want to thank the ushers, want to thank Paul for picking up and dropping off. Want to also thank our young people who came up with Sister Denise for the children's moment. Want to thank her for that as well, and thank you for taking that on. Yes, we have been trying to build a list of persons who want to purchase copies of the new hymnal. Copies of the new hymnal. Um, who is taking the names? Sister Laureen is taking names. Our great redeemer's praise is what it's called. Huh? Those who want to get a copy, purchase a copy. Our great redeemer's praise is basically $30, $29.95. So $30. Okay? Already? We always encourage persons to have their own hymn book. So when you're home, you can sing and dance to the music as it comes into your head. Huh? Oh. Uh, we were out for Bible study, but we are back with Bible study. So those of us who were out toward the end of last year, we are full swing again. Come tomorrow. I know Wednesday they were meeting... Were they meeting Friday? Yes. Ah, look at that. So we, we have they have resumed. And I'm presuming that the Saturday man-to-man uh, -man Bible study is also done. That said, I'm going to invite you. Am I forgetting anything else? If not, I'm going to invite you to stand to receive the benediction. And then we sing, Come, let us anew our journey pursue. I invite you to stand for the benediction. Go forth, my brothers and sisters, into your world, living as God has called you to live. Go forth knowing that the God who calls is the God who accompanies. He never sends us where he is not willing to accompany us. And so may God the Father who loves and takes care of us, God the Son who redeems us by his life, death, and resurrection, God the Holy Spirit who continues to give life to us, May God be with us today and every moment of our lives. Amen. Amen. Come, let us anew our journey pursue. Come, let us anew Brother Savage, that tune is not Methodist, you know. So we go and sing the Methodist, and everybody's. <laughs> Let us on you our journey pursue, roll round with the year, roll round with.
okay, we're, we were practicing, so we're going to sing it for real. With life, with life, with life. Oh, well, so we're going to sing it until we get life. Savage, you hold everybody as sick. Remember now, if you don't sing with life, we stay in here until we get it right. So let's continue with um, what's that? Verse four. All right, let's go, Sister Cora. We're singing it faster than that. Sing the first verse again. The body of the Lord Jesus Christ give it for you. The blood of the Lord Jesus Christ give it for you. And may the peace of the Lord always be upon you. I never stand still. I never stand still till the now go and serve the Lord with power. Yes. I'll stand by her. Huh? We don't get 